Hello, everyone. So yeah, I'm going to talk about how we optimize networking at Datadog in our Kubernetes environment. So we face several challenges at Datadog. The first one is we are migrating to Kubernetes, and we need to be able to have a network that's as efficient as the one we had in the past when we're using VMs, both in terms of throughput and latency. And also, we're running pretty big clusters, so like in 1,000 to 2,000 nodes. So we need solutions to scale to this number of nodes. In addition, we have several clusters, so we need to make sure that communication between clusters is going to work. And we also need to be able to access uh, Kubernetes workloads from standard VMs because this will simplify migrations. So in order to address this in Kubernetes, we do several things. The first one is we use IPVS for QProxy instead of IP tables. Um, so IPVS is a native uh, load balancing solution in the kernel. And it's much more efficient than IP tables when you have a lot of services and a lot of endpoints, and they move fast. It's still a bit young, but it's been working great for us. In addition, we don't do any bridging on the host. So we only do routing. Um, and this allows us to avoid the cost of using bridging in terms of latency and CPU usage. So of course, it requires specific CNI plugin, but it's also pretty efficient. And, and finally, we do native pod routing, which means we give every pod uh, an IP that's routable on the network. And this way, we, have, we don't pay the cost for the overlay network. And it also allows for cross-cluster communication between, since all IPs are routable, they can work between clusters. In addition, they can also work from uh, standard VMs accessing Kubernetes workloads. And finally, it makes for much better ingress solution. So how does this work? So if you want to do, uh, give an old pod routable IP on your network, you have several solutions. On-premise, what you can do is you can do BGP. But of course, if you're on a cloud provider, you can't do BGP because there's no way to interact with a, a net network controller with, with BGP. So the way you could do it is use static routing inside the network of the cloud provider. But this doesn't scale very well. For instance, on AWS, you're limited to 50 routes, 50 static routes on a network. So of course, if you have more than 50 nodes, it's not going to work. So you have solutions for that. Uh, several plugins, several CNR plugins are going to give you a uh, solution for it. So the way they work uh, is they add additional IPs to interfaces and give this IP to pods. And so your instances have several IPs, and some of them are given to pods. So this, this works pretty fine. And you have a similar solution on GCP when you can alias whole blocks to instances and interface instead of IPs, but it's basically the same idea. So. Um, if, if you work with Kubernetes, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the challenge of getting traffic inside the cluster. So the way it usually works when you have a standard uh, service is you make it a load balancer service. And what's going to happen is the controller is going to drive a load balancer and create it and attach all the instances in your cluster to the load balancer. And then traffic is going to be sent to this instance on node ports and load balance to appropriate pods using QProxy. So as you can imagine, if you have thousands of nodes, uh, the I mean, all the thousands of nodes are going to be attached to the load balancer, and, and so it's going, to be, it's going to be pretty big and complicated. And also, what's going to happen is traffic is going to be sent like randomly across the cluster, and you're going to end up having uh, like HTTP queries, for instance, ending up in a very sensitive, uh, on a very sensitive node, like a node where Kafka workloads are running, for instance. So you have uh, kind of a workaround for this, which is setting the service to external traffic policy local. In which case, what's going to happen is QProxy is going to fail health checks um, for nodes where there is no pod with the actual service running. So as you can see in, on this slide, it's much more efficient because the data pass is only going to go to nodes where the service is actually running. However, you still need to manage very big number of instances and health checks, and it cannot scale with thousands of nodes. So in terms of HTTP ingresses, it's very similar to load balancer services in terms of design. Instead of having um, the ingress controller is also going to drive load balancers, but HTTP one in that case. But the design is, and issues are basically the same ones. If you use a NAIL 7 controller like uh, Nginx or HAProxy, uh, routing from proxy to pod is also going to be, is going to be IP based, so it's fine. But you still need to get traffic to these proxies, and same issues as before. So the good thing with native pod routing is what you can do is actually drive a load balancer to route direct traffic to pod IPs and it's much more efficient. So these solutions are very recent, but they work pretty well on both AWS and GCP. And this is what we're planning to do like everywhere. There's only a few challenges remaining, which are like it's limited in terms of the type of load balancer supported, and it's today limited to HTTP ingresses, so you can do TCP or UDP, and hopefully it's gonna change in the future. 
And that's it, that was short. I mean, if you have questions, you can ping me on Twitter or you can come to the data booth and we can happily discuss it together. Thank you.